Alrighty, everyone, welcome back. So, it is time for the 2024 mock draft. The first one, uh, in fact. Not not the final one, the first one. Probably should have said that at the start. But anyways, uh, I figured since it's the All-Star break, and today is the last day before games, and as well as that too, uh, today's actually the start of um, the new series that is going to drop on Monday, the AHL series. I'll get more into that later on. Um, but... I figured it'd be a cool idea to take a look at the 2024 NHL draft. Now that about 97% of the league is in the All-Star break. Uh, by the time this video uploads, I'm sure all of them will be. Um, but regardless, uh, let's just get straight into it here. So, a few things to keep in mind for fun. I used Tankathon to mix up the draft order. I didn't go by the overall odds. So, if you're wondering why is he wearing a Buffalo jersey, and why is Chicago ninth? They're not ninth, but if they were, uh, just know I did that just to spice things up. I thought it'd be f more fun to look at it that way. Um, it, this is not based off of, you know, like, oh, this team really needs a defenseman. This team really needs a forward. No, it's kind of based off of my overall rankings. Just the team mix-up I thought was fun. I thought it was a, a fun thing to, to do um, overall. So, yeah, uh, we're just going to get straight into it here because we got 15 picks. Starting off with number 15, we have David Juracek's brother uh, who has been in the news recently. It's Adam Juracek. Uh, Juracek would go 15th overall to the New Jersey Devils if the draft lottery went the way it was uh, for, for the order. By the way, I used Tankathon for that. I don't know if I mentioned that. Uh, Juracek, defenseman from Plezen, Czech Republic, uh, six foot two, 168 pounds. He has 19 goals or 19 games played. Sorry, uh, one assist uh, with HC Plezen. Uh, he actually got injured um, in the World Juniors. Uh, he had a really good Holinka Gretzky Cup, and then he got injured, uh, which really is unfortunate, but sometimes that's how it goes. Uh, sometimes players will get injured, and just the repercussion of what uh, Juracek's had to go through is that. But overall, he's still a really good defenseman. Is he going to be as good as David Juracek? Probably not. Well, if Juracek keeps getting misused in Columbus, maybe he will be better than David Juracek. Um, but the odds are Juracek's going to be the better brother, but Adam still is going to be a really solid defenseman, could be a good second-pairing upside type player. I don't see him as a first-pairing defenseman in his future, but still, a guy that, if you're looking to improve your blue line, would be a nice addition there, and that's why I have him at 15. Not because I think he'd fit with the Devils, but because, you know, that's just where I see him being ranked right now, and he would definitely be higher if he was healthy. If he had a really healthy year, I think he would definitely be higher. Just the injuries have dropped his stock value, which is it's just how it is sometimes. Uh, number 14, going over to the Washington Capitals, is Carter Yakimchuk. Uh, defenseman, and again, this is a really defensive draft class. Uh, defenseman from Alberta, Canada, six foot three, 194 pounds. He's played 42 games, has 20 goals, 27 assists for 47 points with the Calgary Hitmen. Now, uh, there's nothing short there of a really good offensive game there out of a defenseman, which is good to see. You like you like guys who can play really good offensively. However, I've seen in a lot of articles and a lot of news pieces that I've read over the past couple of days um, that there is some defensive issues in regards to Yakumchuk. So Washington here, you know, they got a blue line that is relatively getting older in age. They got some guys who are coming up on it. Sandine's looking positive. You know, you got some other guys that are looking solid. But you would want another guy there to help out solidifying that. And Yakumchuk, a player who's going to take some time to develop. He's going to need to fix his defensive game before he transitions over to the pros. Um, but he'd definitely be a solid acquisition if the Capitals do bottom out around 14th overall. Uh, in this year's draft. Obviously, um, the team ranking would change, of course. And again, it's not based off of how the player would do with the Capitals. But, you know, obviously, Yakimchuk would fit well with Washington. And I think overall, there's a lot of defensive issues that he has to fix. But I think he could be a really solid two-way guy if he fixes those issues. Uh, number 13, uh, which is the Nashville Predators, just for fun. Uh, you have Michael Bransag Nygaard. Very interesting name there. Uh, he is a right wing from also Norway, the first forward that I have so far in this draft. Uh, six foot one, 198 pounds, uh, has played 29 games this year with Mora IK, which is the Hockey All Svetskin League. Uh, six goals, seven assists, 13 points. 
Um, very smart, lethal winger. And the Svetsky League is mainly a men's Swedish league, more or less. Or I think it's a um, Slovakian league. I'm not really too sure. Um, it's, it's a men's league out there in Europe. It's a European men's league. That's a better word term for it. So a guy like Nygaard getting experience like that as a 17, 18 year old forward is pretty good. And a guy from Norway too, um, a team that played in the world juniors this year. Um, definitely they weren't like great, but they still, um, it still shows that there is some upside here, um, in those Norway players and Brandsek Nygaard is leading the way with that. So I hope that Nygaard, uh, will select well. He looks like a really solid winger. There are some issues you need to fix, obviously, like with every prospect. And when we get to the guys in the top five, there are some issues that I do have with a few of the players. But for Nygaard, obviously, still a solid lethal winger and definitely has that experience that not a lot of other players have on this roster. So definitely keep that in mind. Uh, number 12, uh, which this pick will go to the Seattle Kraken just for fun. Uh, I have Zane Perrick, um, a defenseman from Ontario, Canada, six foot, 181 pounds. Uh, he's played 43 games this season with the Saginaw Spirit, has 22 goals, 44 assists for 66 points. Uh, Perrick, solid defender. He has an elite offensive sense and is really aggressive when it comes to handling the puck, which at points... It can be a blessing. At other points, it can be a curse. So, and by a curse, I mean he gives up an offense, he gives up a chance, and the team leads to scoring. That is a possibility. However, Perrick, a team like Seattle that is still, like, they're kind of at right now. They made the playoffs last year. They're in the mix this year, but they're probably not going to make it at the All-Star break. Um, is what it is, and, you know, the team doesn't pan out the rest of the year. Um, then, yeah, the Seattle Kraken do have some time to develop this guy down below in the system, and it will work out. But Perrick, still, very solid defenseman. Uh, not the best one in this draft, but there's definitely a lot of other guys that are above him who could be better. But Perrick, still a very solid guy. Uh, number 11, going to the New York Islanders. We have our second forward, finally. We've had, like, five defensemen. Uh, we have Liam Greentree, who could be a steal for the Islanders here if they get this pick. Uh, Green Tree, a right wing from Ontario, Canada. He is six foot two, 198 pounds. Has played 41 games with the new with with not the Islanders with the Windsor Spitfires. Sorry, um, has 27 goals, 37 assists for 64 points. He has really good hockey IQ, and he plays with some high anticipation. However, I have heard from a friend that I know, and this is not to say that like oh I have friends and, and all this. He works for the Windsor Spitfires. There are rumors that go around that roster that say he's a little bit of a cocky kid. He thinks he's better than he probably really is, which I think if teams will take that into consideration and will know about that, and I think definitely teams are going to look at that and say, well, do we want a guy who could be toxic in the locker room, could have locker room issues like that, and that may be why teams pass up on him. Potentially, that may be why he falls to 11th. And that's one of the issues that I think he does need to fix. He needs to fix the fact that, you know, you can't be so cocky when you're out there. That's the, that's the biggest thing. But yeah, Green Tree has the talent for sure to be a really solid forward. And if there is a chance between now and the end of the season, he could get picked higher. There's a very realistic possibility that he gets picked higher um, in this draft um, as, the, as the year heads on. And again, with these players... There is plenty of time for them to develop even more. Like, there, there could be guys that are in this top 15 that may not be in the top 15 when I do this next time. Or may be higher, way higher, or way lower. Who knows? Honestly, there's so much time left uh, before beginning and the end of the season that you really, we really don't know. Um, but yeah, number 10, moving into the top 10 here, we got Zeev Buyam. I'm probably saying that wrong. I greatly apologize to Zeev. Uh, defensive from California, USA. Uh, six foot, 183 pounds. He's played 24 games this season. That's seven goals, 26 assists for 33 points with the University of Denver. Um, he blossomed in the World Juniors. It looked very well against some international competition. So I expect him to be a decent pick here. And if the Arizona Coyotes, who have this pick, I don't know if I said that, get this player, um, then it could be a very solid defensive, defensive choice for him. Um, he is viewed as a better two-way defender. That's what I've seen in some of my articles. So, boom, I'm looking forward to uh, seeing where he fits in this draft. Uh, number nine, going over to the Montreal Canadiens, just because why not. 
Uh, it's I have Berkeley Catone, uh, a forward from Saskatoon, Canada, five foot eleven, hundred sixty three pounds. Uh, he has played forty three games this season with the Spokane Chiefs. Has thirty one goals, forty assists for seventy one points. Uh, he's listed as having some great creativity and skill, but needs to work on his defense, which is shown in a lot of the forwards in this draft. Um, it's pretty obvious when you look at it. Yeah, some of these guys don't really look at defensive stats and defensive uh, defensive abilities. So a lot of them are more offensive when you look at the forwards this year. Just being honest, when you look at the guys, it really is the honest truth. But Catone, a very underrated player, not really talked about all too often, um, and still is going to have a lot of potential in this year's draft, for sure. And I think could be a steal if the Canadians get them, which part of the reason why I put him in ninth is because would the Canadians really go with another defenseman? Would they really go with another defender? That's part of the reason. That's kind of why I did it. But again, not based off of the team. It's based off of the overall player. Uh, number eight would go to Minnesota, uh, just for fun. We have another defenseman, Anton Siliev. Uh, probably the best defender, out of, or the second best defender out of the KHL currently. Um, six foot seven, so he has some really good size to him. 207 pounds. Uh, 54 games played, 3 goals, 8 assists, 11 points with Torpedo. Now, you would think that for a guy who is massively tall, very tall, six foot seven is very tall, um, you would think that a guy like him would struggle with skating, would struggle with his defensive play. Obviously, offense isn't really there, but in the KHL, it's not really expected for a, t for a player to score a lot, especially a defenseman, especially a rookie defenseman, in fact. Uh, because KHL coaches have been very hesitant at giving young players time. We've seen that with Matt Mitchkoff a lot. Um, but that's definitely a thing. But he's really good mobile. He's a really good mobile defenseman. He has really good stride for his height. And definitely, you don't want to come up against him in when you're coming down the ice. And you, you're you coming down the ice, rushing the puck down, and you see Siliev, and you're like, oh, crap, I'm going to get murdered. So, yeah. Um the height is going to attract a lot of players, or a lot of players, a lot of teams for sure. Uh, so if he drops to eight, that'd be a pretty good steal there uh, for the Minnesota Wild. And hey, why not stack up your decor even more? So yeah, Siliev, one of the better players that I'm looking at in this draft. Number seven, though, is Consta Hellenius. Hellenius, I think I said that right. Uh, Hellenius is a center slash right wing from Lojarvi, Finland. Uh, five foot eleven, hundred eighty one pounds, and it, it feels like the prospect pool reviews all over again. Where the fin the Finnish and the Swedish were all just giving me the finger because I was say I was mis mispronouncing the cities. I apologize if I did that. I apologize if I mispronounced his name. That's my bad. Um, honestly, I wasn't really looking at this draft class until a few days ago, so I don't really know a whole lot. But Yolar um, Hellenius, not Yolarvi, um, Hellenius with in thirty six games played this year with the. Uh, Joe Gray, which is the Liga, uh, he had nine goals, 18 assists for 27 points. Uh, he's listed as being a great playmaking center, but size is a problem. And yeah, I mean, like for a guy like him, he's five foot eleven. Um, I mean, you look at some of the other players in this draft. Demidov's five foot eleven as well, so there's definitely that concern. Um, and Demidov's in the top five, but Hellenius, there's obviously that size that's a little bit of a concern. But we've seen a lot of players who don't have the size to them, be really good players in the NHL. <laughs> Wayne Gretzky. I'm not saying he will be Wayne Gretzky, but definitely, like, that's something you got to take into consideration. Some players will pan out, though, at that height. Some players won't. So definitely keep that in mind when you're looking at a uh, Hellenius. But, yeah, I like him a lot. Very solid playmaking forward. Uh, and Ottawa has had their eyes on them, apparently, throughout a lot of this uh, season. Uh, number six might surprise some people. He has fallen a lot um, in the most recent drafts, draft mockings that I've seen. I have Cole Iserman at number six. Iserman was looked at as high as two a few day, a few, a few months ago. Uh, this this season though uh, has really seen a dramatic increase in his overall draft stock and ranking. Iserman, left wing from Massachusetts, USA, uh, six foot, hundred ninety six pounds. Uh, he has played 13 games with the United States National Development Program. Uh, he's also played with the other U.S. team, too, but I'm looking at the USHL numbers here. Uh, thir 16 goals, 5 assists for 21 points. Not bad numbers. He's a really good offensive player. Great talent, great shot, great playmaking abilities. The skating is the biggest issue, and I've seen a lot of scouts and a lot of people say that if he can't skate, a lot of teams are going to pass on him. That's just how it is. That's the expectation. You need a guy who can really skate well. And 
Iserman's not that player. He lacks a lot of the edge work that a lot of players in the NHL have. So he's a really solid player. He's really solid. He scores a lot of goals. He's a good offensive playmaking guy. But just overall, if you want, if he wants to have a higher draft ranking, aka just compete in the NHL, he's going to need to work on that skating. And there's been plenty of guys we've seen in drafts prior, and plenty of guys in the five draft classes that I've covered on this channel. I have seen plenty of players that lack the skating, lack the edge work, but have panned out. So I wouldn't put it on Iserman at all. He definitely would pan out. And as well as that too, Columbus. Why not stack up the forward core even more? Who would get the sixth overall pick uh, if I did this that way? But yeah, Iserman number six might surprise some people. But regardless, let's get into the top five. So moving on in now into the top five, we have some very interesting names in here. Number five, which would go to the Anaheim Ducks just for fun. Uh, is Sam Dickinson. Dickinson, a defenseman from Ontario, Canada. He is six foot three, 194 pounds. He has played 46 games this season with the London Knights, has 13 goals, 30 assists for 43 points. I'm going to say this about Dickinson. Um, he actually has the same last name as me. So what I was praying is that the Flyers and the Coyotes, who are my two favorite teams, would be bad, so then that way I would get someone with my last name on either of my teams. And you know what my teams do? They're good. I, I, I can't fathom it. But anyway, Dickinson, looking like a very powerful skater out there on the ice, has great transition. There are some defensive abilities that I'm like, eh, a little bit, eh, with. But still, really solid defender, arguably the second best guy in this draft class um, out of the defenders overall. Maybe the third, actually. Um... You can, make, you can make a debate. You can make a debate for sure. But yeah, Sam Dickinson, very solid player and definitely has the, has great upside to be a good defender in the NHL. And hey, Anaheim, they already have a really stacked defensive core, but adding Dickinson would make that defense dangerous. But he's going to take some time to develop for sure. Uh, number four, which would go to the San Jose Sharks, which would flip out the hockey world, um, is Artyom Levshinov, a defenseman from Zobloven, Belarus. So a Belarus player here, six foot two, 198 pounds, has played 26 games this season with Michigan State. Yeah, he's over in the um, college league, which is a very unique path. And I have that in my notes here. It's a very unique path for a guy to be born in Belarus, not play in the KHL or any of those big leagues there in Belarus, but to come over to the United States and play in not just college, but also the United States Hockey League too. I find it really interesting. But anyways, he has seven goals, 19 assists for 26 points with the Michigan State um, in the NCAA. So definitely interesting defender, has really good offensive and defensive abilities, is probably the best defenseman in this draft when you look at the overall numbers. He has to be the best defenseman, um, the number one guy. Now that could change between now and... Um, June, obviously, that very well could change because it's January at the time recording this video. It could definitely change. But right now, Lev Shinoff looking like the best defender in this draft class. 100%. Um, number three, and this is where the controversy gets here. Um, for the Chicago Blackhawks at number three, I have Caden Lindstrom. There is going to be some controversy for this. Um, he is a forward from B British Columbia. He is six foot four. 206 pounds. He has played 32 games this season with the Medicine Hat Tigers. Has 27 goals, 16 assists for 46 points. He is very fast for his size and physically gifted. Now, I know there's a lot of complaints here. Lidstrom has really risen up the rankings for me. And when I'm looking at Chicago, too, I did take it into consideration a little bit. Chicago would want to forward first and then would want to get a defenseman later on. That's what I'm what I'm arguing here. Now, you could, you could rank... Levshinov above Lindstrom. I wouldn't disagree with you. I wouldn't. Um, and, and I think that definitely you can make that debate. Um, but I think Lindstrom is a very underrated player, could be a potential steal um, for a lot of these teams, and I, and I think could be a guy that shocks people. I think he is. I have a lot of faith in Lindstrom to be a great player. And obviously if Chicago was, you know, higher in the rankings, they'd pick the meat off or, um, you know, the other guy that's on this board. But definitely... Like, you know, you look at the names. It, I think that Lindstrom could be a really big steal here uh, for the Blackhawks. Number two, and this is where the play, this is where the team rankings get wild. Because when I did this, I'm like, there's no way these two teams are top two. Heading to the Calgary Flames, which would rise up like seven spots, uh, is Ivan Demidov, a right-wing slash center from Russia. 
uh, five foot eleven, 188 pounds, has 23 games played this season with St. Petersburg in the MHL, not the KHL. Uh, 20 goals, 25 assists for 45 points. He's listed as being a great puck handler and has a good two-way ability. So, you know, he's really good offensively, really good defensively, is a player that you would want on your team. And in Calgary, for a team that has had a lot of Russian guys come through, like Sergei Fedorov, Theron Fleury, um, they're probably not Russian, I'm just being an idiot. Um, but definitely, there are they are players. And Demidov is a guy who, for sure, could be comparable to those players. And I think that Demidov would look very exciting on some of these on on some of these teams and is a lethal player out there and you know, a guy who's a really good puck handler is a guy you want to have in the NHL. Absolutely. And at number one, I'm not surprising anyone. Wearing my Sabres jersey, because of course Buffalo got the first overall pick, it doesn't mean anything. It really doesn't mean anything in this ranking. Um it just just for fun. Uh, going number one to the Buffalo Sabres would be Macklin Celebrini, which is no surprise to anyone. Celebrini was in the player rankings. Uh, he's been number one many times before. Uh, center from British Columbia, again. Uh, six foot, 190 pounds. Uh, 22 games played, 18 goals, 17 assists for 35 points with Boston University. He is a dynamic forward and is the undisputed best player in this draft class. Now, is he going to be Bedard? No, I'm not upsetting anyone by saying that. He's not going to be the next Connor Bedard just by looking at the overall numbers. He isn't, um, but still, a really solid player, great puck handler, really good creativity, great offense. Has a pretty good defensive style to his game as well for a first overall pick like him. So yeah, Celebrini should be the undisputed first overall pick. And the fact that it's Buffalo is crazy to me. But anyways, uh, that is my number one 2024 mock draft. Now, I want to preface by saying that I don't, like, like, I'm going to be honest. I really don't, I didn't know a lot of these prospects before I started this. I'm going to be honest. I started working on this on Sunday. It's Wednesday. So definitely, um, it, it, I didn't spend a lot of time studying these players. I kind of made my ranking and then just did the descriptions and all that. I've been working on this for a little bit. Definitely with the comment section that I may have and the season that goes on, I will have more opinions on these players as I edge closer to the draft. So my rankings may completely change. But anyways, if there's anything I did wrong, anything you thought I did wrong, let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below. Thank you all for watching. If you enjoyed, uh, make sure to leave a like. Hit that subscribe button down below. We greatly appreciate it. But anyways, thank you all for watching, and I will see you guys in the next video. Adios.